and welcome back. It is a stark choice between protecting Native traditions and preserving a community's future. For the Navajo Nation, it is a decision that may mean mining the past. We get the story from Al Jazeera's Casey Kaufman. They're some of the most iconic landscapes in America. The far off the beaten path of national parks and tourist attractions is another side of the Navajo Nation, where energy companies dig up the land in search of minerals. This coal mine is just one mile away from Cynthia Dixon's home. She lives here without electricity or running water, but she feels those are the least of her problems. She says the explosions and coal dust from the mine are polluting the land where her livestock feed. I got sheep buried out there. Lambs that they got sick, sick from. Maybe the, from the blasting or that great dust that they were eating. And we lost them out. 15 lambs in one month. But it's not just the livestock Cynthia is worried about. She says living here has taken a toll on her own health, too. Sometimes we get runny nose, even when we don't even have a cold, we get runny nose and cough and sometimes feel nauseated. So when BHP Billiton, the company that owns the mine, announced it was pulling out of the coal business here, it was good news for Cynthia. Until she found out there could soon be a new investor and it was the Navajo Nation itself, her own tribe. This is all about money. Nobody cares about whose house is going down or who's got health problems. Tribal officials say they can buy the mine now for around $90 million and turn a profit of at least $200 million every year. That's an important increase in revenue for a native government dealing with a 40% poverty rate and high unemployment. None of the workers at the mine would speak to us on camera, but off camera, they made it very clear that keeping their job is top priority. Truck drivers and mechanics make more than $30 an hour, and sometimes extended families of more than 10 people depend on that one salary. Lorenzo Bates represents the area where many of the miners live. He believes the purchase of the mine is not only important for employment, but also as a long-term investment for the tribe. The advantage is starts with with a res with a hundred years of resource that you that you own, uh, and that generates revenue. It generates the jobs. It generates uh, <clears throat> sustainability and a future. That's a future these young environmentalists don't want. It's like trying to revive the dinosaurs. Brett Isaac is a young Navajo leader who studied economics and then started his own solar energy company. He believes that coal is dirty, past its prime, and also at odds with tribal values. It's actually keeping us in, in an era that doesn't really exist anymore. You know, the rest of the world is progressing forward with other technology. They're advancing in different ways of becoming more efficient. And the Navajo Nation instead decides to in, in invest into coal, into something that's already been mined and seems like it's on its last leg, you know. Especially with the way society is moving towards becoming more fundamentally green. You know, that's, that's something that the Navajo people have always embraced about being one with nature, being a part of the environment, and utilizing coal as our means of income kind of counteracts all the things that we were brought up to believe and brought up to actually hold as, you know, uh, sacred. Tribal officials are not opposed to renewable energy, but they say it won't deliver the way a lucrative coal mine will. If the wind's not blowing, your wind turbine's not producing any energy. If the sun's not out, your solar energy is, is obsolete. We need stable forms of energy for the Navajo Nation in a larger scope we're talking about sovereignty exercised to its fullest. We talk about sovereignty being an independent domestic sovereign of the United States. This is actually putting us on a plane that we have never been before as an Indian nation. This way we can say we have our coal mine. Would you want to buy some coal? Colleen Cooley documents the environmental impact of coal mining. If the deal goes through, she fears her tribe will be forced to clean up a mess they didn't make. She says increasing federal regulations will require expensive operations like waste management and land restoration. Tribal officials say that will be done by the power plant that buys the coal, but Colleen is skeptical based on past experience. The outside interest coming in, doing stuff on our land, whether it's mining or development or trying to start a business, they come in, do their business, and then they try to promise that they're going to clean it up, but they don't. 
they just get up and leave. They pay the communities a certain amount of money, they provide jobs for a certain amount of time, but we're usually left with the cleanup. At times it's too much for Cynthia Dixon. She sees the land dug up every day and the coal dust makes her sick. Sometimes I regret moving out here. But this is her ancestral land. It's been in her family for generations and she can't forget her father's parting words. Take care of the land. Don't let nobody take the land away from you. That was his last words and he passed. I always remember that. No matter what happens, Cynthia says she's staying put. But very soon her unwelcome neighbor might not be an international energy company. It might be her own tribal government. A report from Al Jazeera's Casey Kaufman.